Sweetie, welcome to Agonor Side. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, thanks for coming. I'm Coco. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Good, good to see you. Good to see you. I'm Kim. Kim. Nice Pleasure. To meet you. Pleasure. Thank you for having us. Oh, it's our pleasure. Thank you for coming. It'll probably be the greatest day of our lives. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. Today we're hanging out with Terrence Riley at Aganorsa Leaf in Miami, and he's gonna to explain to us their cigar line, what makes it special, in particular about their tobaccos. Thanks for watching. So, besides making cigars in Nicaragua, we also make some right here in Miami, and we have our two rollers here doing it the old school Cuban way. They roll 100% uh, by hand uh, for bunching and putting the wrapper on. So everything that we make for ourselves is, is here. Everything we import from Nicaragua for ourselves goes in here. And then the cigars we make for other companies temporarily go here, but then they, they leave within a couple days. So it's really in and out for uh, the other brands we make. Our stuff all stays here. So this is Trojo 99. Lijero from Jalapa. This is one of the two uh, main seed varietals we grow, and from Jalapa, which is uh, where we grow a lot of Corojo. This is a bonded warehouse. So we, when you import cigars, you pay S-chip tax, which is the federal tax, which is 40 cents a cigar. You import 100,000 cigars, that's $40,000. But at least when you make them in Nicaragua, you can let them rest down there, and you don't have to, to pay that until you, you import them in here. So there's a rest period. We're here, we're already in the States. So once they're made, they're technically, you're supposed to pay tax. The way to, the way to delay that is we have a bounded warehouse. So this is uh, basically the cigars go from, from where they're rolled to here, and then they rest here until they're ready to be to be packaged. So and again, they keep them in, in, you know, so we know who made it, we know what the blend is, and we know what date it was made on. And so, one, we, we know when to start uh, how long they've been resting, or two, if there's any issues, we know who made them and when they were made and you know, anything like that. So We're one of the largest growers of tobacco in Nicaragua, and we sell to people like Drew State, we sell to the Newmans, we sell to, uh, you name them, we price them. Altidus is one of our biggest buyers. Uh, so there's tons of people that buy our tobacco. And then we make cigars for Joan, for Foundation, for Warp, for Viaje. Uh, and then we make our own, our own product. And all of that is due to the, to the, the quality of the tobacco. That's why people work with us. We're not, you know, uh, that, that interesting personally, but, but our tobacco is. So the, the way we, we do here is kind of break it down where we grow two seeds primarily from two regions, Corojo and Criollo, from Jalapa and Esteli, primarily. So all our blends have those two tobaccos in them in some capacity. Some in more, some less than others, but they're in everything. So what we do is have you smoke these individually to see how they contribute to the blend and then see how they combine and then we'll have a cigar and see how it, we kind of go from notes on the piano to chopsticks to Mozart. And that's kind of how we're going to do it. So this is the first one we're, we're going to do here. We're going to do a, a Corojo 99 seed uh, from the Jalapa region and it's a visa, which means it's the middle part of the plant. So this tobacco from this region, and it could be Seco, it could be Lijero, but this tobacco is in everything we do in some capacity. So when you, when, when you light this up, again, be careful on the drop, but it's gonna impart salvation on the sides of your mouth. You're gonna get spice up front, like a tingle on the tip of the tongue, and through the retrohale if you do that, and then a lingering sweetness. And so, and now again, you taste blueberry pie, and apple cider, or anything else, God bless you, but we get, kind of stick with the keynotes. Corojo 99 is not commonly grown in Nicaragua. It's a, it has a lower yield uh, than a lot of tobaccos do, and so when you're growing tobacco, you got to turn that into money. And so some things ferment faster, some things uh, the leaf is more is, uh, less susceptible to disease, and so people oftentimes grow their seeds because they're more uh, they're more reliable in that way. But because of the taste and the aroma of this particular uh, seed varietal, that's why we grow as much of it as we do. Delicious. 
Yeah, you should right away salivate right inside your mouth. We call that a gusher. One of, the re one of the reasons we do this is because we control the whole process from seed to ash, is that allows us to maintain the flavor that's in the leaf all the way into the final product. Because if you have the best piece of steak on earth and you overcook it, yeah. now, you have, now you have shuba. So yeah. it doesn't matter how good it started, it matters how it ends. The second is Criollo 98. Now Criollo 98 is, a, is more commonly grown in Nicaragua. It's more quintessential Nicaragua. And this is grown in Esteli. And so Esteli also has that much more volcanic soil. It's a dark, rich soil. And it's, this is gonna be grittier, it's gonna be earthier. It's not, it's not so much about strength as much, but it's definitely gonna have more of a gritty, earthy taste to it. And, and, that, and that's, uh, in fact, if you take your tongue and put it on the roof of your mouth, you'll even get a salty taste. Retailers love that, double sales. <laughs> see how that changes it though? And the reason we do this is that we want people to see that there's really a genuine process and a distinction that creates the flavor that we have. It's not about, yeah. oh, we grew tobacco and Castro's beard and sent it to North Korea, a <laughs> nuclear facility for fermentation or, or whatever stories it is. It's, it's it, this is, our, we, our, our kind of slogan is our leaf is our strength. Yeah. And the reason for that is, is, is we have to show people that it really is. It's not just a, a, a gimmick. It's, it's, yeah. real, it's a real difference between what we do and what other people do. Not to say what anyone else does is, is better or worse. It's just that it's unique. And it, it, with another benefit is that it helps me, like, you, like so you've smoked this before and you're like, oh, I really like this. Yeah. Well, I knew you would like it because you like the Creo 98 more. Okay. So it, it also, because what you, at an event, what a person will say is, well, I like, you know, uh, mild cigars like Davidoff and Macanudo and La Florida Americana and Padron. And it's at the end of it, you're like, what? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. what? yeah, those are like eight different types of cigars that, whereas if they smoke a cigar and they go, I like Criollo 98, like, okay, now I know what you really like, you know? So it's just easier to do it that way because otherwise you're just playing kind of a guessing game and it's hard for people to determine it's uh, put into words a lot of times why they like something. Whereas, okay. whereas now they can say, I like Creo 98 from SLE. That's really my flavor profile. Okay, great. So can I ask what your favorite so, cigar I, is? I, 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 when people ask me that, <laughs> and I, I, let me give you a, a long digression to avoid the answer and then the actual answer, is that when I'm looking at things for the most part, I'm looking at it in the terms of is it supposed to be what, it, what, it's, what it's supposed to be. So if we have a cigar, I'm just making something up called the Spice Bomb, and it's mild. <laughs> okay. Like, I'm, that's, I'm looking to see if it has spice. It's not whether I like spice, it's whether it's supposed to have spice. And then, is it burning well? Is it drying well? Is it consistent? And it's all those types of things that I'm looking at, mm -hmm. so that it is what it is. So I, can, I appreciate things for what they are supposed to be. Like, I hate when somebody sees a movie and they're like, ah, oh, I saw, you know, uh, Sophie's Choice, but I wasn't really, you know, laughing. It's like, well, you know, that's a, yeah, it's a really sad movie. You're not supposed to laugh. You know, uh, it's not funny. You know, so you, you're, you're, you've got to judge things by how they're intended to be. Or like Spider-Man, a guy can't, you know, be a spider. That's impossible. It's like, well, you've got to accept the context of what is being done. And so for me, I kind of look at that most of the time when I'm smoking because what's important ultimately is what is what the consumer wants. It's not really about what I. Um, like we have you know, 80 ring cigars, you know? I don't smoke a lot of those, but when I do, I, I'm, try, I'm thinking of how- The people who would want Yeah, that yeah, the person that likes this, is this doing what, it's, what they would want it to do, okay. you know? Now that, now that I've avoided the question for 20 minutes, <laughs> uh, I'm more actually of the Corojo dominant, uh, and I, so I like, uh, we have a, a, a cigar, Buena Cosecha, which is very Corojo dominant. Uh, I like our, uh, our uh, um, Guardian of the Farm, the, the original, that line I, I really love. That's very Corojo dominant. Um, so I'm more Corojo dominant. I like this cigar, even though it's a balance, I, I, I really enjoy that a lot. Um, so it, when I'm smoking just purely for my own enjoyment, I'll go more Corojo dominant cigars. But 90% uh, of the time, what I'm doing is I'm kind of observing if it's 
doing what it's supposed, supposed to do. To do. Exactly. Can you tell us a little bit about the story? Of the, of the company? Yes. So sure, actually, that's a great question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so the owner's name is Eduardo Fernandez. And he has kind of a story like everybody else in the industry, and then a completely unique story. Okay. And, and so he's a Cuban guy that left Cuba after Castro, like so many other uh, people did from yeah. Cuba that, in the early 1960s. Um, but his family was not in tobacco. They, they weren't related to it uh, in any way. And he grew up, he went to school, he became a banker, um, and he was working in a bank in Miami in the 80s, and he noticed that pizza and Domino's and these things were becoming popular. And he said, well, uh, he and his brother took that model and brought it to Spain. So he was working during the bank during the day and going to the pizza shop at night and working during at the pizza shop to learn the business. And then after you know, a certain amount of time, I think a year, he figured, okay, I kind of understand how this business works. They took that model of Spain and opened something called Telepizza. And it turned into a major success. It's still there. They sold it for, I think, 600 million euros in the early 90s. Yeah, that's, pretty, that's a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. A lot of money. Uh, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot of money, man. Well, I mean, I mean, the, there were partners, and it was it wasn't just. It, I mean, there was other shareholders at that when they sold it. But yeah, he got he got a nice chunk of, uh, of money out of that. Yeah. And he was, was kind of set, and he took a couple years off where he, he lived in England and just did some trading and things and but he was kind of you know he wanted to get back into things and he went to high school in Connecticut and when he was in Connecticut he would see the farms that they you know, where they grow tobacco up there and he said he always wanted to be involved in farming and his wife is Nicaraguan so he went to Nicaragua and he invested in, in agriculture pigs cattle and tobacco and what's really interesting about it is that he uh, usually when you when you start growing you have a buyer because it's worthless if you don't have somebody to buy it from you so it, the guy will go, you know, a certain amount for this guy, a certain amount for that guy. And it's all sold before they plant a seed. He just started growing, and his idea was that basically, if you have a good product, people will beat a path to your door. And it worked out. I think the Oliva family were one of the first to to buy from him, and it, it just grew from there. And he was farming more and more. And then people started asking him to make cigars. So then he started on the, on the manufacturing side. And he, this was called uh, Tropical Tobacco, the distribution here, and uh, it was owned by a uh, legend in the industry, Pedro Martin. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was at a stage of his life where he kind of wanted to get out of the business. He was, I think, in his 80s at that time, uh, or early 70s, uh, at, the early, at the youngest. And he sold the business to Eduardo. And so now he had farms, factory, distribution. And that really is important, as I was telling you before, to the process is that seed to ash, all, all the way through, you can mess it up at any point. You don't, yeah. you don't grow it right, you don't cure it right, you don't ferment right, you don't age right, you don't blend right, you don't roll right, you don't, you don't age the cigars after they're made. And it gets to you, and then it's a bad experience. So it, with cigars, uh, that's really, any, you, take a, you can get a monkey, and the monkey can eventually put it together two tobaccos that will, that will work. You know? uh, but he can't do that day in, day out. And so that's really the challenge, is making sure it's consistent year over year. And there's nothing like the cigar community. And going into the lounges and experiencing the cigar oh, community, yeah. there's nothing, nothing like, it. like it. Yeah, really, there's not, I mean, nobody at a bar would be like, hey, would you check an old fashioned? Sure, you want one? Let me get you one. You know, I mean, people yeah. do that with cigars. And it's really, mm -hmm. that's really what's incredible about it. I mean, the only reason people are in this business, or should be in this business, is because of that aspect. There's easier ways to make a living. Sure. Uh, the government's after you every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. There's there's new taxes. There's all sorts of crazy things. You know, countries have uh, political issues. But uh, at the end of the day, when you're in a shop and you're sitting with people, and that connection is—I mean, I, I've been doing it for ten years, and I, it still amazes me to see how people connect over a cigar. And that's that's why I do it. I mean, I wouldn't be doing this if it weren't for that. I want to see the final this is cut. Be in the yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I want to see the final cut. Thank you. <laughs> Pretty sad. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, I mean, that's, with these people, they, uh, they're, they're a tough bunch. <laughs> I see that letter here. Thank you. I'm going to pause this for a second.